Here's my links for today, Thursday, June the 21st. I hope you're writing like uh, crazy folks there and enjoying yourself. Um, these links today make me realize that the, the internet is just a gift that keeps on giving. And it's easy to see why some people get addicted to it. I'm not saying I'm addicted to it, I'm just saying, you know, just saying. For example, look at Photo Peach here. Look at this right here. Photo Peach is pretty cool. secret over here. That's where I keep my sticky notes. Um, what I said was there's a lot of potential in this site, especially a project. Maybe you could do a project based on um, having students evaluate software as users. Um, software developers are always begging for alpha and beta testers. And I think that this is a real possibility as a serious project, an authentic project for students, if they'll just turn your classroom, at least part of your classroom, into a software evaluation team or teams. And they'll explore the tools that are in here and uh, they will uh, judge for themselves. And it gives important information to, uh, to developers as well. I'm just kind of tongue-tied by the possibilities in this. And if you just, you know, you just look at this, uh, Photo Peach for education, you know, it's obviously intended for educational users, that's good. Um, it's, uh, it allows you to combine music and text, that's cool. And it also allows you to create slideshows, captions, and track. Okay, we'll get students to actually do this stuff. Um, if you look down here. There's some use cases. This is great for students to look up use cases here. Here's a planet quiz. And here's something about owls. And then you can teach them what a use case is. It's a, it's a good idea. It's, you can take it. Take it and run with it. The next one that I really would like to show you is these 20 common grammar mistakes that almost everyone makes. We are starting to see this a lot in on the net. And what I mean is that you have people who are selling things on the net. You know, they're selling online classes and they're selling workshops and they're selling advice on how to write. But they realize that in order to do that, they have to give some value back. So this is one of those sites that's given some value back. And in this case, a little sticky pad here, I love what they did here with, uh, with the distinctions between envy and jealousy. I just think it's marvelous what they do here. And uh, they say envy is when you covet your friend's good looks, and jealousy is what happens when your significant other swoons over your good-looking friend. Now that, if you're teaching Othello, that is the way to define envy and jealousy. Or if you're looking at the difference, uh, trying to define irony, I think this is a particularly good way to look at the difference between irony and coincidence and how much more complex irony is. I think it's great. You can see they also tell you about what they might like. And even better is the, the comment section. This is very, you know, you can tell how powerful a site is by the comment section that's in it. And this is a very, very good comment section. So, you know, this goes all the way to, no, 
know, all of, it's got, if you notice down here, it's got four pages of comments, which is, is awesome. This brings me to the Google segment of the screencast. I always seem to have something from Google here. And, um, uh, I, um, I particularly like this because of the little animation that's in this. I love the animation. I love the accents in the animation here. It's just really cool. And it does exactly what I want my students to do in class. When I give an assignment, this has just the right nuance. This assignment, there's just so much stuff I can put in about binge drinking. <laughs> Some of it's not even my personal experience. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I'm finding out all sorts of stuff I never knew before. I'm not sure just how much I should put in. I think I might just focus on a couple of key papers. Oh, man. Skip ahead to the next week. Google is a popularity contest, not a judge of what is worthwhile. And anyway, our unit guide did say we needed to use scholarly literature and other credible information. Google just doesn't cut it. Look at... <laughs> I think it's great. Uh, you know, there are some problems with this video. It's not as nuanced as I always want it to be, but there's some good advice in here. So, uh, show this to your students who are doing research. a few quick notes here. Um, I have two items on constructing games. One is for iOS, the other is for HTML5. And you might find students who this is just their cup of tea. It would be wor very well worth showing them these. Um, down here we have a literature map uh, and I think it's a very handy tool. For example, type in Wendell Berry, a Kentucky writer that every student in Kentucky should be reading. And what you get is a series of connections. And what you can do with this is you can have, have students make connections. Like, uh, for example, What's this doing over here? Wendalberry. That's obviously a mistake. So, you know, there's problems with this. Um, who is uh, Kenneth Wilkshoff? You get into some poetry there. You, get, you assign an author, uh, student for each of these authors, and you have them make the connections between Wendell Berry and Oliver Sacks, between Wendell Berry and Wallace Stegner. I'll tell you right now that Wallace Stegner was Berry's teacher at Stanford. So, so what you can do is you can have them make the connections, or you can just point them, to, have them point to the disconnections. They're creating the meaning from this map. This, you know, by itself, it has no great interest other than the curiosity. The connections it makes and also the theory behind it is really good. In fact, if you want to, uh, GNOD is the sponsor of this site. I think it's a f German company. They've also got GNOD for music, GNOD for movies, and very similar to GNOD for literature. By the way, I'm using a tool today that's called Omnidazzle. That's where I've been getting all the markings that I'm doing on the page. And here's another one. <laughs> Fold, I'm not sure. But every time you, wherever your uh, mouse is, it will create a uh, different thing. So right here, I'm going to show you reading, writing, and wikis. Welch. Wind, squelch, so we'll just
just go to this site right here, reading, writing, and wikis. Wikis are a much, much misunderstood tool, much like blogs. And I just love this. I've made a little note to myself here. Love the easy way in this. This gives easy way in this gives to wikis, although the format is a bit funky. I like what it does, including giving lots of case examples of what students are using wikis for. The emphasis is exactly right. It wants students to be producers rather than just consumers of knowledge. So, you know, take a look at this site. It has some cool stuff. I like the approaches to projects here. It says you can join an existing project, use another product, start your own, work independently, collaboratively, peer at it. You know, lots of ways in, multiple ways in. Hard to write with a mouth, isn't it? So uh, take a look at this and see if you can find some uses for this yourself. Uh, writing projects should have one of these right now, I think, just to play with. By the way, they call, when you're playing in a wiki, it's called a sandbox. Okay, that's it for today. I'm going to leave you with something from Omni Dazzle. Dazzle. It's called Pixie Dust. I hope you enjoy it. You want the Tinkerbell? Bell?